Good morning, guys. All right, so I'm doing, this is a new dog. I laugh because uh, they said this dog was a schnauzer. Uh, this is not a schnauzer. This is a terrier mix. They want short body, leave the mohawk. Um, I know this tub is a mess. It's from yesterday. I'm going to clean it as soon as I'm done with this dog. As soon as I'm done bathing this dog. You're okay. You're okay. Seems like a pretty sweet dog. You okay? Come on, you gonna stand up? Got some eye boogers. I'm trying to get out. Another thing I need to do when I'm got him in the dryer is fold some more towels. I've got about 30 towels and only two left. So some of them are in the dryer. Some of them are on my folding table. Hey, come here. This dog is in the 15 to 30 pound range. Um, so this dog will be $55. Come here. You gotta turn so I can get you. $55. Unless there's aggression or something. Spray this cage down. I've had a request for unedited videos um i cannot do unedited videos for two reasons the first reason is if i did unedited videos then y'all would have to sit and watch a dog dry in the cage dryer for 30 minutes the second reason is i have to answer texts and calls and it's not fair to my clients if I'm, you know, revealing their number in our conversations. Now, yeah, I could go in and I could blur everything. But guys, these vlogs, are, some of them are already like an hour and a half long. It takes me three times that to edit. So if I've got a hour and a half long video, it can take me up to four and a half, five hours to edit that one video and if you start adding 
you know, like special effects and, and uh, captions or, you know, writing on the bottom, it adds up um, even more. So that is why I can't do unedited vlogs because I've had a lot of requests for unedited vlogs and that's why I can't do them. So I'm gonna wait for him to dry and then we'll finish him. Back with this dog. In a minute, I'm gonna have to stop and go get my next dog. Um, so I'm gonna take a 30 blade, do his paw pads real quick. You're okay, buddy. This is one breed of dog that I don't like grooming because their hair is so coarse that it does cause hair splinters. Um, if you don't know what a hair splinter is, imagine a regular wood splinter, but hair. Um, I have a permanent hole. I don't know if you can see that right there. That goes all the way through and you can actually, if you can see that, there's actually some hair stuck in there already. It, uh, they, they hurt worse than regular splinters because they're so tiny, you can't get them out. Um, the only way I've been able to get them out is like with soaking it in Epsom salt or even like putting liquid band-aid and then taking the liquid band-aid off and it sticks to the hair, so it pulls the hair out, but it's, they're not fun. Clippers. You're okay, buddy. Okay, so I get questions all the time on how do you know when to stop on a black nail? Okay, you see how in the middle of that it's got black? That's when you stop. That is when you stop. I have got a headache. Easy, buddy. Easy, buddy. No, no. Buddy, you're okay. Ooh, your breath is bad. Got some pretty long quicks. Okay, take a seven blade. We're gonna go reverse. The reason we're gonna go reverse is with this coat going with the hair, it's gonna be uneven. So if I, and it's not gonna cut anything. If I go like this, it's not gonna cut anything. So we're gonna go reverse. And it just makes a lot smoother 
haircut. Now you don't want to do this on all breeds because there are some breeds where it's not going to look as good. It's just a learning curve of learning which types of coats you have to do this on and which coats you don't do it on or you don't have to do it on. Because it is a little more work. It is a little more work. All right, you can sit. Sit. My other, my next clients here. All right, guys, we're back with this dog. You up. No, no, no. You know, they told me, told me this dog was a schnauzer. I was expecting a schnauzer. Guys, this is not a schnauzer. If anything, it's a... Um, Shih Tzu Terrier mix.
on. No, come on. Stand up. No. You're okay. You're okay. No. No. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. I'm currently working on a ad, not for TV, but like to post in Facebook groups and stuff about the bathing system and the undercoat removal. Um, Cause guys, honestly, I wanna save as many coats as possible. I gotta get this guys. All right guys, that was just the owner of this dog calling to see um, since they're new clients. How the scheduling works is uh, right now I'm leaving an hour and a half between dogs and sometimes that's just not long enough like this dog has taken me about two hours because she took a little longer to dry but uh they were just calling to see if when when that hour and a half was up if they're supposed to be here and I just said no that's just when the next dog is scheduled to come in um, so I'm going to call them, give them about 10 minute notice. Cause all I got to do after this is do the head and trim around the feet. The most daunting, you know, thing that you have to do for grooming for me is the paw pads and the nails because about 50% of dogs don't want you messing with their paw pads and feet and if i can get that out of the way and get done with that first then i don't have to worry about it you know at the end of the groom when i'm basically just ready to be done with that dog um and it's not that i don't like grooming guys it's just you know when you've been with a dog for two three hours you're ready to move on to the next dog um because the more dogs I go through in a day, you know, the, the quicker I'm going to be able to go home if I get dogs done. Does that make sense? I mean, I don't think that made sense because it sounded like I'm trying to rush through. But how, what I'm trying to say is as the day goes on, I get, you know, um... I get more motivated to get the dogs done. That way we can go home. It's not like I'm trying to rush through. It's just a... It, kind of like an excitement to go home at the end of the day type of thing. You know, I love grooming. I love my job. But when you've been up here for eight, ten hours and you've groomed six, eight dogs, you know, you're ready to go home by the end of the day. And then, you know, the next morning I'm ready to groom again. It's just, um, it's just a cycle. Hey, 
hey, hey, hey, hey, quit. No, we're not doing all that. One thing when you're doing the tail, guys, I've said it many, many times before, is to make sure you know where the end of the tail is. You don't want to accidentally cut off the end of the tail. Okay, so I'm gonna take this off. They wanna leave the mohawk. No, no, no. So, no, quit. Just gonna bring her head down. And we're just going to get all this shaved off. Hair right here grows the opposite way. So you gotta go the opposite way. Okay. They want it short everywhere. Guys, if a client wants a dog shaved a certain way and it's, you know, and I can do it, you know, there's no severe matting or anything, then I'm gonna do it. You know, if they want a double coated dog shaved and they understand that, you know, the hair may not grow back all the way, then, then they accept that responsibility for that. And I, I groom the dog the way they want to be groomed. Okay, my wrist has been hurting for about the past week, just from the wear and tear of everything. Tin blade. Girl, you got to turn. She, she hears my daughter over there. No, no, no. No, no, no. Girl, you gotta stop licking.
I've gotten a question about do dogs automatically close their eyes when you bring a clipper to their eyes? Yes, most of the time they do. Um, I know there's been some concern about, you know, me going over the eye like that. Guys, that's the only way that I can fully get all that hair. Okay, so I'm going to trim ears. My battery died, I had to get a new one. Okay, they wanted this trimmed a little bit. So, I don't know how that's gonna go because this dog is just, stop! Wants to move all the time. These are my bad scissors. No. You keep licking me. Bit. Try to keep it even. Can't always keep it even when a dog is moving all over the place. Okay. Um. Slicker brush, I'm gonna trim the feet. Not much to trim since these quicks are so long. Stand up, take the tin blade. This uh, private area is pretty bad. So just clean that up pretty good. This feet. I mean, that's, that's gross, guys. Okay. I think she looks pretty good. Pretty good. Her ears were clean, didn't have any issue there. I am gonna, come here, trim this up a little bit right in here. 
paint and she's done guys i'm gonna get her a bandana i usually just grab whatever's on top because by the time the the dog comes in again i've already been done with these the bandanas that the dog got last time um that way i don't have to keep digging around now if they're from the if i have say i have like three toy poodles come in and they all are females then i'll get them different bandanas but for the most part i give out the same bandana it's just easier that way boys get boys bandanas blah 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 okay she was in this cage so i put her back in this cage so then when she leaves i'll disinfect it but i won't do it until she leaves thanks guys for watching don't forget to like this video subscribe and i'll see you next time